Hi, I'm Larry Richardson and welcome to Zeniers.com Cooking. In this edition we're going to make Chinese food. Now why in the world would you want to make Chinese food when there's a takeout place right up the street? Mainly because if you make your own Chinese food you can control the amount of oil and the amount of salt that goes into it. You can also add extra vegetables and flavor it any way you want. Tonight we're going to make a chicken chow mein. So come on, follow along. Making Chinese food is only slightly more complicated than a lot of the other dishes that we've made in this series. You do have to buy just a couple of spices that you may not have on hand. One of them is Chinese style five spices, which gives it a very unique Chinese flavor. White pepper is another one of the spices that you'll want to have on hand. Now remember as we move along that you want to use both of these very sparingly because you can add a little bit and then add more as needed, but once you've added some, you can't take it out. So we're going to be really judicious with both of these spices. You'll also want to have some soy sauce, the soy sauce of your choice. Everybody has a different taste in it. I like the Kim Lan soy sauce. You're going to need some canola oil. We're going to use very little of this. You're going to see that this is a very low fat recipe, which we pride ourselves on at Zeniers.com. You will need some cornstarch as a thickener for the sauce that goes with the chow mein. And then we're going to have some chicken broth, uh, bamboo shoots. You're going to use this as kind of an option. You don't always have to have these, but I kind of like a little extra texture in my chow mein. Then we have bean sprouts. These are an absolute must in this process. So make sure to buy a fresh bag of bean sprouts when you go shopping. And if you buy these, try to buy them and use them within two to three days because they do tend to brown up in a refrigerator rather fast. The next thing you're going to want is three sticks of celery. Um, a whole onion. As usual, I use the Vidalia because I like it. It's a little bit sweet. We're going to use about a half a clove of garlic, a quarter of a sweet red pepper. I like to add a hot red pepper too, a chili pepper. Um, some people do not. It's not really traditional in chow mein, but you might want to add this. It's totally up to you. And then we use two chicken breasts, which are cut into cubes. And make sure you wear gloves when you do this and use a knife for the chicken. Either clean that knife to no end or have a second knife ready. Also, do not cut the chicken on the same board that you're going to cut your vegetables on. We try to keep cross-contamination to a minimum and that makes for healthy meals. The last thing that I want to recommend is this, and they're not a sponsor, this Texmati Organic Brown Rice. I was able to find this at Costco, which is also not a sponsor. It's sort of halfway in between a white rice and a thicker traditional brown rice. We have to get the vegetables ready. Now the first thing we'll do is the sweet red pepper. The sweet red pepper is being included as much for the visuals as it is for the flavor. It's, it is very sweet. It does have that peppery taste. But what I add it for even more than that is that I find that chow, chow mein can be kind of plain looking. So when you add a couple of vegetables with some color, that can brighten things up and make it more appealing. So we're cutting this into very small pieces. We do not want huge chunks. Next up comes the celery. I like to cut the celery at an angle. You'll see why. When you cut it at an angle, it gets kind of a little bit more exotic shape than when you go straight at it. And I'd say I'm cutting it about an eighth of an inch thick all the way up the line. Next up comes the onion. We cut both ends off of the onion. And we take the paper off. And we cut the onion in a very different design than we would for omelets or Italian food. We cut the half in half and then we cut it into little slivers. You can see that. Little slivers. Now when I'm cutting the red hot chili pepper, I do like to put on a rubber glove. And I know I repeat this over and over, but when you're dealing with really hot foods or, or really spicy foods, it's a good idea to use a rubber glove because if you touch your eye later after cutting something like this or a jalapeno, uh, you are going to feel it and it will last. So you really want to do this. 
I also use rubber gloves when I'm cutting chicken or any kind of meat product. It helps to avoid cross-contamination of the food uh, in advance of actually cooking it. In addition to that, I also use a separate cutting board and a separate knife for meats and vegetables. Or, at the very least, if you cut meat on your cutting board, which I really don't recommend to, to use the same one for meats and vegetables, but if you do happen to do that, um, make sure to wash it in hot, soapy water. And the next item that we will prepare is the garlic. Again, I don't add garlic so that this becomes a garlic-ridden dish, although I bet you could easily turn it into garlic chicken by adding a lot of garlic to it. But since we're shooting for chow mein, I'm only going to use half of a garlic head. And then I'm going to take my mincer and mince the garlic up. And I'm going to mince this right on the other vegetables that we've prepared. The garlic's all pressed, the vegetables are ready, at least the ones that we have to chop up. The other thing I like to do is take bean sprouts that are going to be used, and they are an essential item for this dish, and make sure that I give them a good rinse. That way you can get any grit off of it, um, if there's any impurities, so they're nice and clean and ready to be used. Now we're ready to start cooking. The first item I'm going to cook is the chicken, and what I like to do is take the canola oil and add a teaspoon of canola oil to the pan. It helps to keep the chicken from sticking. There we go, one teaspoon. This is a very low fat, practically no fat dish that we're making. So I have the canola oil in there. I'm putting the pan on medium. And we'll let that preheat for a minute or so. So here comes the chicken. I'm not going to add anything to it yet. I want to get it all browned up first. And the reason we do this, and we don't cook everything all together at once, is it gives the chicken a chance to brown up safely, and it gets it so that we can cook it the whole way through, and not worry that the chicken is going to be done at a different time than the vegetables. I'll add a teaspoon of oil to the pan. This is canola oil. And I'll put this pan on medium. The pan's all preheated, so we're going to pour the vegetable mix in. Um, I decided to add a little bit more of each vegetable to this dish. Now, the point of cooking these vegetables is not to make them soft. We really want to cook them to sort of a, um, a crunchy saute level. So I don't want to see a lot of clarity in the vegetables. I'd say just when the onions are starting to look clear, that's a really good time to lower the heat down. What I like to do with the sauce is take a measuring cup and put about three quarters of a cup of water in it. And then what I'll do is take some of the cornstarch and add, I would say, two tablespoons of cornstarch, and they can be heaping tablespoons. Then take a small spoon or a fork and mix that up. The reason I do this ahead of time is that cornstarch tends to clump. And if it clumps, you will have many, many donuts inside of your chow mein. If you didn't know, the reason that we use cornstarch in this dish is that it will make the sauce a little bit thicker than just plain water. So I like that consistency. And you can add a little bit more cornstarch, a little bit less, depending on the consistency that you like. I recommend that you add just a little bit, you know, as we did the two tablespoons to start, just to make sure that you don't make a sauce that's too thick for you. You can always make another round and another round of this and keep adding it as needed. So what we can do with this mix is then take the spices we're going to use and add them to it. So I'm going to add one teaspoon of the five spices to this mix and just a dab of white pepper because white pepper can take over a dish. So I would say go with the quarter teaspoon. So here we go, add a quarter teaspoon of white pepper. And next up, I am going to add some soy sauce. Now the soy sauce I'm measuring in 
teaspoons. So let's just see how far we get. One, two, three, and four. Now don't go overboard on the soy sauce. Assume that you're making a dish that people can spice as they see fit. You can see that the chicken is starting to cook pretty well and what I'm doing is leaving it on one side so that I can see that it's starting to cook through and then I'll flip it over onto the other, almost like a hamburger. It just makes it a little bit easier to manage than to try to cook each morsel fully by itself. So you can see that's getting nice and browned. And I want this chicken cooked through before I add, add it to the dish. I do not want to see any pink in it. It will cook a little bit more in the dish, but I just want to make sure that it is in fact cooked before it's thrown in there with the vegetables. Now the vegetable mix will cook with this sauce, so again, you want to keep it a little bit crunchy. You do not want these to go all soft, so you don't want them to saute the, to the point of total clarity. Okay, so now the chicken is all cooked up. I do not see any pink sections of chicken, so I'm putting these into the pan with all the vegetables, and I'll throw that sauce in there too. Let's see how we did. Now I do like mine saucier than that, so I'm going to make another helping of the sauce. Um, remember it's three quarters cup of water, two tablespoons of starch. I'm not sure I'm going to add any five spice or white pepper yet. I really want to taste this first, but I will add um, two tablespoons of the soy sauce. There we go. Now I can see the sauce just touching the top. So what I would say is since I doubled the vegetables that are going into this dish, then doubling the sauce only makes sense. And the last thing I'm going to add are the bean sprouts. You may have forgotten that we had these. They're a real vegetable booster in this dish. I like to add these last because they do tend to be very delicate and if I'd heated them up with the rest of the dish, they probably would be melted to nothing by this point. And they really should have a little bit of a crisp to them. Now it looks like the sauce that we made, an awful lot of it has kind of stuck onto the vegetables and the chicken. So I'm going to add another three quarters cup of just plain old water to thin it out again. I really don't want to add any more cornstarch than is already in this dish. Okay, so the bean sprouts are starting to relax out, and I'd say we have ourselves a meal. So there you have it, a tasty chicken chow mein on Texmati rice. Boy, does it taste good. It's also good for you, as we always say, delicious, nutritious, and pretty easy to make when you get down to it. So the next time you have a yearning for Chinese food, try to make your own, see what you think. Make it with less oil, less sodium, and much healthier than you can buy out. Still treat yourself, go out whenever you want, but when you're going to eat Chinese food on a regular basis, try it this way. And we'll also make additional Chinese dishes on Zeniers.com, so make sure you stop by the site as often as possible. And make sure that when you do stop by, tell us what experience you had with this recipe. Did you make it better? Did you make it worse? Or did you come up with something completely different that we didn't even think of? I look forward to seeing you on Zeniers.com.